I said, come in now. I said, I'm not, not going to hurt you. So he didn't, but I didn't say, what did you do? So, you know, you know how children are. They know when he did something, they weren't supposed to do. So I said, come in. So we sat down. And I said, um, what happened? He said, she's been picking on me. He didn't even say what he did yet, though. And this, that, 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 that. At this time now, now it's probably about maybe noon. The teacher who he said he was going to kill shows up to work. Now, they're supposed to be to work about 7.30 a.m. And they're never late. It's not like here. There's no, you get there, they're dressed, they're sharp, you know. Yeah, we have a teacher here who's always late. So, um, so what happens was that teacher, he came late. He said something jumped on him in the middle of the night. Okay, and he was praying and he could not get out of his bed. And he just sat there and started praying and praying and praying. And it didn't loose him until 10 a.m. 11 year old boy. Okay? So I talked to Richard and I said, hey man, you know, what did you do? And he said, nothing. I didn't. Well, I went to just tell her to stop. Because she won't stop. She makes fun of me. This, that, 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 that. So I said, Richard, you have a talent. And I said, you have a, you have a talent that people work for years to have, but you can't do it like this. Okay? And he said, she sees me too. Kind of found that this girl had the gift of sight. So the taunting that was happening was not happening, she pulls his hair or something and runs. These two were having fights in the astral planes. We're in the bush now. We're not here with children drinking uh, Capri Suns <laughs> and watching TV 10 hours a day. These children, they, they, they're built a little different. First of all, they don't even wear shoes half the time. I couldn't go to the concrete to get my coconuts without my... I'm, and they're running up and down the mountains with no shoes. Come, come, come! <laughs> you know, so they're built different than we are. Okay? Um, so we talked about it, and then I asked him, I said, Richard, because I'm we're talking just like I'm talking to you. I said, well, how is your English so good? And he said, I go places to learn it. I said, where'd you go to learn English? He was like, everywhere. I go everywhere. He's like, excited now. He said, I go everywhere, I go everywhere, I learn English. So I said, okay. So he astral travels, which astral traveling is. It's not so that you can go and, oh, I want to go visit my grandma or Crystal Cities or Emeralds. It's for you to go and learn things. That's the purpose of dreams. That's the purpose of astral travel. That's it. The body has a biological mechanism in it called dreaming, and dreaming's only purpose is to wake you up. That's why you only dream in the last six, seven minutes of your actual rest time. So this life is a dream. What is its purpose? To teach us things. And to wake you up. Wake you up. To the highest. Of, I'm going. I'm going to all your answers. <laughs> that Solomon, brow chakra, son of man. That's what the name Solomon means. That's what Christ called himself, right? Solomon, son of man, right? So wake yourself up to Solomon, to God, the God reality, your fifth dimension, your intuitive reality. It wakes you up to all of those different things. This life. It's not so that we can come here. When you look at Egyptian hieroglyphs, right? Look at any of them. I, ch I challenge you. I'll give you $1,000 if you can find one. And don't draw it yourself. You'll never find one where you'll see an image of heaven on earth. I don't care what book you look at. You'll never find an image of them just like... I don't know, just eating and wine and dancing and drums and white Cadillacs with leather and slamming <laughs> Cadillac doors. And all. You're not going to see any hieroglyph with that image. You only see one type of image in Kemet. The afterlife. That's it. Yeah, th this is what we're going to do when we leave. And the other images are instructionals on how to get there. They knew that we would fall so deep away from the ideas and the, and the aspirations of self-actualization. They even had to put images on certain temple walls of, of sexual positions. Now we think it's deep, yeah, and you know, the tantra thing. No, we've fallen so far from grace that we became so stupid we didn't even know how to have sex anymore. Rats know how to do that. We forgot that. So then they even had to create different archetypes, who we call gods, that were over different things. Like, one is over air, one is over moist air, one is over the breeze, one is over the sunlight. 
One is over the black hole that sits behind the sun. And we can just go on and on and on and on and on. I'm sure there's a deity of sandals. Okay? Because we, we've fallen so far from our aspirations and the ideas of being you. Who and what you are. When Richard revealed himself, that little girl just got a little glimpse of what he actually is. Not the little poor boy in the bush with no shoes and chipped teeth. That's not me. <laughs> I'm going to show you who I am. You know, as we often say, I can show you better than I tell you. So we can talk all day. I'm a child of God. I'm gonna, show me. And I guarantee if you show me, this whole room will be flooded with so much light and energy. Everyone's hair here will turn white. Well, some of you know what I know. <laughs> like what happened to Moses when he just saw the Lord's backside. His hair turned white. He just saw a shadow. The OGG. Okay? And the Lord he was talking to was Oya. They called her Jehovah in the Bible, but we know that was impossible because there's no J's in the Hebrew language. It was actually Oya, who was the deity, the archetype of storms. If anybody ever watches the X-Men, she's played by Holly Berry. Right? Yeah. And what's so interesting about that character of Storm, listen, next time you're watching, they never refer to her as a mutant. You notice that? Mm -hmm. Everybody else is a mutant. They say that she was worshipped. They give you a little hint. They say that she was worshipped as a goddess in Kenya. Okay? She was worshipped as a goddess in Kenya. Her name is Aurora, Aurora, okay, which is a Kenyan or Kiswahili word that means freedom, okay, or Bantu, which is really what Swahili is, the Bantu language. So that Oya energy that was talking in the storm cloud, because what Moses used to do, he used to climb up the mountain and he would talk to the Lord in the storm cloud. He was just talking to Oya. That's it. That idea of self-actualization, we utilize the Orisha in order to climb that ladder to be who we actually are. Because each Orisha has a stream of cognition. And once you master each one of those streams of cognition, you move to the next one. And eventually, after you climb, you climb, you climb, you climb, you climb, you, climb, you become something that I couldn't even describe because it was only designed for you, individually. We all have an individual purpose, question, and mission. And it's at the top of that chain, which we call Jacob's Ladder, or we call the DNA Double Helix, or we call it the Caduceus Staff, or in Budun, we call it Dambala and Aiwedo, the snakes that come around the planet. You see it on the side of the Red Cross thing and the ambulance cars, that snake, and then you have a pole down in the middle, which is your spine. Okay? Which that's nothing but your spine. Okay, it's no different than King Kong when he climbed the building. Buildings that represent spines whenever you see that in media mythology, okay? So it is that aggressive energy or that aspiration that we've lost the self-aspiration that we're looking to reclaim and recover, okay? And this is something that I teach, obviously. Um, I have a school by the name of Sudua House Spiritual Center. And um, my focus, even though I deal with the Risha, initiate there, have shrines, do initiations, my goal is for everyone to be them. That's where your power is. Your power is not in becoming like Oya because you heard that she can make rain come or, or electricity come. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. But you're dealing with, with someone said, three-dimensional elements. Third dimension. There's no real power in the third dimension. There's only illusions of power. Like right now, if I could lock that door, I would have the power. Right? Because I'm controlling the environment. So here we think controlling one's environment is actually authentic power. This is false. Aligning yourself with your God self. Being more than just a reflection of your higher self. Because even in your corruption, you're a reflection of your higher self. That's why Lucifer was the star of the morning. And Jesus was the great morning star, the bright morning star. It's the same thing. Lucifer and Jesus is the same exact person, okay? But what they are, they're emanations from the same source that say, well, in this world, we got to have polarities. As long as you're stuck in the world of positive and negative, you ain't got it. When you're dealing with the Risha, angels, archetypes, they function within polarity. They're not the goal. You, as your highest self, even beyond your, your precious carbon, 
there is no polarity. Okay, even our precious music that we love so much functions on polarity, the polarity of silence and noise. Then that means that ain't it. Because when you conceptualize it in your mind, you weren't thinking silence and noise. When you sit down with your guitar or your piano, you just flow, you just feel it. That's a real reflection of higher self, where there is no math, there is no computation. Okay, so this is just a sample of some of the things that we share in our, uh, our school and... <laughs> okay. Where do you well, I have a lot of them on. You know, I know, I, everybody does that to me. Yeah, they come afterwards. Where do you, where, physically, where do you go? I teach all over, but we have an online course that we do. So that, and okay. we did that so that we could be more accessible okay. to people. Because we first, when we first started, we were local. We were mainly working out of New York, New Jersey, and then I started getting people from Brazil, Germany, um, Cuba, London, and a lot of people. And uh, it was getting increasingly difficult to mail out audio, so we just turned it into a full-fledged online school. Okay. But so you can get more connected to the information and learn more about the Orisha and Ifa and West African perspective. All right. Thank you all.